Morning, folks. Welcome to your Friday edition of Fireside Chats at Lake Superior Art Glass. Uh, today I'm going to be making a honeycomb wine bottle stopper. Um, I came up with this design in 2008. I was uh, out in the Puget Sound of Washington um, doing my internship for my undergrad, which was in environmental education. And uh, I'd made honey or, uh, bottle stoppers in the past and um, the, the metal part of the bottle stopper I came to find out uh, that I've been using was chrome. Now, that's what most cheap wine bottle stoppers are, is they have chrome metal parts to it, and the acidity in red wine will actually eat away at the chrome and um, make the chrome come off of the, the base metal, and that'll leave chrome flakes in your wine and make your bottle stopper look like crap. So, um, I set out to make one out of stainless steel, and searched and searched and searched all over the internet. Um, and the only ones I could find were this, was this one person who was custom making stainless steel, uh, it was food grade stainless steel um, bottle stoppers for glass blowers specifically, but they're extremely expensive and it just made it really cost prohibitive. Um, you know, there's a big, uh, a big thing with functional items like that, you know, people are only going to pay so much for, for something like that, regardless of the quality, because it just, it performs a certain function and not many people are going to drop, you know, 80 bucks on a wine bottle stopper. So I figured, you know, there's got to be, got to be some other stainless steel bottle stopper out there. And I kept searching and I finally found one. Um, it was designed for wood turners. So this is the base that we use. This one's been melted a few times because it's the one we use in the studio. Um, but yeah, it's stainless steel and it has a threaded top on it to get threaded into a piece of wood. Um, and typically that's a problem with glass. Most glass blowers like to use bottle stoppers that have a, um, a female uh, insert here where you can keep a little stub of glass on the, the glass piece and slip it into the bottle stopper for the connection. <clears throat> and so I was kind of like, oh, that's not gonna work. But then I started thinking, I said, well, you know, why can't I just blow a hollow piece that goes over this? And that's where the honeycomb bottle stopper design came from. So um, this is the honeycomb pattern. This is the glass piece that I'll be making today. It's blown, it's hollow. And then once it's cool, then we use a two-part epoxy to glue it onto the stopper. And that actually makes a really, really strong connection. Um, the other style of stoppers where I was just explaining that have a female piece here and you put a, a rod of glass into the stopper and glue it in, um, those connections are a lot weaker because you only have that thin piece of glass and the silicone or the glue holding it together. Whereas this, when we put it on here, that glue settles to the bottom. And so not only is uh, the glue basically bonded between the glass and the steel with threads, um, it's also providing 360 degrees of contact and a much wider point of contact at that gluing point than the other style. So um, there's nothing wrong with the other style. Um, it's a lot easier to make a marble uh, for that design. So that's, a, that's one of the main reasons when people ask why I don't make uh, marbles to put on my wine bottle stoppers is because they've got this threaded post and that just doesn't really work um, super well for this style of bottle stopper. Um, but so yeah, that's, uh, that's the deal there. Um, again, this one's pretty melted, but it does have a tapered grommet, which is super nice because not every bottle of wine has the exact same diameter. Um, and so yeah, I've been really happy with these. Uh, I've been able to get them consistently, which is great. Um, and so we make a few hundred of these every year. Um, I use uh, some colored tubing. Today I'm gonna be using green. That's just what I have ready to go. Um, and then, so this one I used amber. You can see that amber color to it. And then the secondary colors and what makes the honeycomb is silver fuming. So you saw me do that yesterday with the rose. Um, where I melted the silver, it vaporized and stuck to the hot glass. I'll be doing the same thing today. And after the silver is on the glass, I'll add dots of clear glass um, on there to trap the silver. And when I melt everything in smooth, the silver burns off where there's no clear glass and uh, just traps the silver under those dots and that creates the honeycomb pattern. So that's what we're doing today. Um, Thanks again, you guys, for all the orders. We had a ton of orders come in yesterday. Our clearance section is going quickly, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely do that soon. Um, we're hoping to add some more stuff maybe in the next week or so here, depending on uh, 
what makes sense to, to have someone come in and, and photograph stuff. Um, and we'll be doing more live streams all next week as well. We've got a couple cool videos coming out this weekend to show you guys. I'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, and yeah, so thanks again for all the support. And with that, I'm gonna start the honeycomb bottle stopper. So there's my green tube. Um, again, I'm using my blow hose so I can blow into the end of this tube. Um, if you didn't see the demo earlier this week when I did my disc ornament, this blow hose allows me to just blow air right into the, the tube of glass. So we want to start out with a really nice even tip to this glass tube. Right now it's a little uneven, so I'm going to rip that off, kind of even it out. And then I'll get about, oh, I don't know, inch and a half hot and then blow a, almost a two inch round bubble. It's gonna be very, very thin. Let's see if I can adjust the light balance here at all. about as good as it's going to get. I see that AJ is watching. That's awesome. What's up, AJ? Uh, I was actually just teaching AJ how to do these honeycomb stoppers before uh, the pandemic hit. Um, AJ is my apprentice. He's been apprenticing under me for about 14 or 15 months now. He's got about three months left of the apprenticeship. Um, and so this is one of the, the last things that I teach in the apprenticeship because it is one of the most challenging items to make. missing you too, AJ. I can't wait to get everyone back in here and get back to work. Seems like about that's as good as the, the white balance is going to get, but that's still pretty good. So now we'll heat up about an inch and a half of this green tube. The tube I'm using is one inch thick. It's a really nice manageable size that uh, just works really well for this application. And I bought a whole case of all three of the main colors like probably almost 10 years ago and this is the only thing I use it for. So I still have lots of this one inch colored tubing. A couple colors are getting low. I think my blue, I, cobalt I ran out of finally, but green and amber I still have quite a bit left of that. All right, so we got it nice and hot. Now I'm going to blow the bubble. So for reference, it's a little bigger than a golf ball, but smaller than a racquetball. Now I'll fume with the spine silver. So again, I've got a piece of silver on the end of this rod here, and uh, I'll heat it up, and that silver will start to melt and vaporize, or sublimate as I'm told, and uh, the, the vapors will then stick to the hot glass in the back of the flame, coating this bubble with a silver sheen. That's the cool thing about this, you're going to get to see actually the silver sheen versus the yellow color that we saw yesterday on the rose. So 
from the GTTs, it's a really light, gentle, small flame that gives you a good silver fume. You guys can see that sheen already. Now I'm really gonna strike it out, putting a nice reduction flame on it. It's gonna make all that silver give it a silver sheen if it hadn't gotten it already. So you're not seeing through the glass there, folks. You're seeing the reflection. In fact, you can see the screen, the iPad, in that reflection. So I just coated that, that green glass with silver through fuming. Now I'm gonna start adding clear dots in the honeycomb pattern. Uh, I've gotta be careful if I get this really blue hot flame on the bubble at all then I uh, will lose that silver sheen. Now a real honeycomb pattern, um, so I did one dot in the center, I did six dots around that. The next ring would technically have 12 dots, um, but for the sake of keeping these a little quicker, and I'm also not condensing this to the point where it would truly come out to a honeycomb pattern anyway. Um, if I were to do that, I'd actually be turning it into more of like a flat disc. Um, so I don't do 12, you know, because then the next one would have 24 dots and so on. Um, I just do um, basically whorls of six. Uh, whorl is a, a term in the plant world for uh, the, the rings of petals in a flower. It's called a whorl, so that's why I refer to all these dots as whorls. I suppose you could call them rows. The row of dots. You wanna work pretty quick or as fast as you can at this step because that glass is super thin. And so it's pretty cool. And as you get towards the bottom of your, your bubble, um, you'll probably start cracking the, the bubble. That's okay. Again, that's one of the nice things about it being so thin is that those cracks usually heal out pretty well when you start melting everything in. So one of the few times where it's actually okay if you hear a couple little tinks because they usually will, will melt out in the next step. Now as we get towards the bottom here, I'm gonna do this last row of dots and then kind of determine if I'm gonna do one more. I try to make uh, kind of an even row around the bottom and so it's not so altered like it has been. It just helps things melt in a little even. So I'm gonna uh, put one more row of tiny little dots just to kind of make a clean line where the dots end versus a staggered line where it would go up and down between this row and the row before. So it's all dotted up. Now I'm ready to start condensing. So I basically start by melting in the front half first and basically getting this, this sphere almost in half. That helps to condense the pattern into more of a honeycomb for the top of the stopper. And then I kind of save the rest of the glass for the sides of the stopper. So at this stage, it's really helpful to dial in your flame chemistry to try to melt off as much silver as possible. So to do that, I try to use a pretty hot flame that's kind of intense, but not very oxidizing. 
Again, if it's oxidizing, you're probably cooling your flame. So you just want a really hot flame, but one that's gonna still be gentle enough not to boil the glass. So right now, my pattern has kind of melted in on the tip. And as I continue to heat, I'm also burning off the silver between all those clear dots. Just letting it condense down on its own here. That's pretty good. Just give it a tiny puff to kind of even things out. Show you guys what that looks like now. Come on, camera. There you guys can start to see the, the dot patterning there. So the front is melted in, and the sides still have the raised bumps on it. Now I'll stick a punty on the tip and then work on melting in the sides. You can also see where that fume is burned off and where it's not. And you can see the gray between the honeycombs. That's where the fume has not been burned off. But on the tip there it has because it's all looking either like kind of red or maroon to you guys right now. All right, punty's on there. I'm gonna build up a little heat in the sides with my bigger flame. And then I'll switch back to my smaller flame to actually melt things in. This bigger flame is a little too wide. It would heat up a wider bandwidth of glass than what I'm looking for, but it's helpful to get a heat base started a little faster. So my flame is not, not quite intense enough, but I just actually added a little more oxygen. You want it to be a little driving as well. So it's all about finding that sweet spot between making it hot and intense, but not oxidizing. I'm also riding below the flame so that my flame is really only heating up the width of the flame itself. If I were in the, in the center of the flame, the flame would shoot off to either the left or the right or both and heat up more glass than I want to. Also, a big thing that helps here is the slower you can spin, the more fume you'll burn off while you're melting in the dots. Now it's definitely harder for me to spin slow. It's kind of like uh, most things I do, especially skiing. I've got one pace that I'm the most efficient at. And if I try to go slower, especially, or faster, uh, I'm less efficient. I, I have a harder time doing things as efficiently. So that's another trick to this point in the process. Trying to spin slow, even though that's harder to do. So it's getting a pretty funky shape right now. It's uh, almost like a mushroom top. I can show you guys in a sec maybe, but um, I'm not too worried about that. My, my main concern right now is just continuing to keep heating and melting. Uh, I'm trying to condense this form down and uh, burn off that fume with the silver, and then I can do my shaping in a little bit here, so. I actually didn't blow there, but I was ready to if I needed it. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, we'd love to see you in a class. All right, so I've got it melted in and condensed, uh, but I didn't get much of the fume burnt off. It's kind of hard for you guys to see on the camera, but most of the fume is still there between all the dots. Um, 
However, I'm going to go ahead and kind of start shaping. Um, you know, what do I want to do here? Maybe I'll take one pass at the bottom of the pattern, see if I can melt off some more of the uh, fume there. And then I'll jump to kind of rounding out the top parts and melting off that fume. So now that I've let a bunch of heat get out of this, I can go really slow and just creep. And that's really where you can burn off a lot of the fume. You'll, you'll be able to see it in the flame and the flame will basically chase that fume right off the surface. Tricky part here is that you will start to deform your piece a little bit just because you're not spinning fast enough to keep things centered. That's okay though. You can always get it back. So I got all my fume or the silver melted off of the bottom of the honeycomb. So that's really nice. That'll make my steps down there or the next steps when I'm going to finish it a little easier. Now there's still a couple spots I didn't quite get. I think I'll get those uh, a little bit later. So now I'm gonna take the punty off Go back to working on the end of this bubble um, and melting off the rest of the fume there and then doing the final shaping on top. And then I'll get the last little bit of fume on the bottom right there. You can see there's some that I didn't get yet. Um, I'll do that when I go to take this off of the tube when I'm just about done. So a little tap breaks it free because on that punty. Now I'm gonna go nice and slow and burn off that fume um, from the sides and up towards the top a little bit. Again, I'm just watching that flame chase that silver away. And the only time that I would spin faster is if I start losing the center of gravity on this piece. But if you let it cool enough and you get rid of that core heat, you can usually spin pretty slow for one rotation before it starts getting too floppy on you. Yep, I just reached one rotation. It's a little off center now, but that's okay. I'm gonna jump up a little closer to the tip and keep just going real slow. Burning off all that fume. Alright, I think everything up top is looking pretty good, so now I'm going to go back to my larger flame. Get a really nice, even heat base in here. And then to get my final shaping, I actually use my inch and a half marble mold to spin the glass in and I blow into it at the same time. Um, and that kind of helps fill out the form and make sure you don't collapse it on the inside. So you got to keep some, keep some pressure in there as you do that. Also using a little bit of a downward angle to help center this uh, glob of glass on the end of the tube. Getting a lot of heat in there, kind of condensing it, shrinking it down a little bit. It's taking a really nice shape now. You can see that bubble's nice and round again. And so now I'll use a mold to round it out. So I didn't blow too hard. I didn't want to truly fill out that mold, but just helped get it nice and round and kind of even things out. Getting it super hot again for a nice flame polish. Also just shrinking it down a bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. You guys can see that profile there. Kind of like a little light bulb. As it cools, you'll start to see the pattern. Let's see if I can trick the camera here a little bit. 
There we go, there's that pattern. Alright, so now, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a couple spots right there where I still need to melt off some fume at the bottom of the pattern. So I'll do that now. I'm going to stick a punty back on the tip. Ben, I guess I'm not sure how... Uh, how switch or twitch works, um, but uh, if you want to shoot us an email, um, our marketing manager can definitely take a look and see what you're thinking. All right, so I'll do one more slow rotation at the bottom. Really just focusing on those areas that uh, have the fume that needs to come off. There we go. So now I'm gonna get the heat really even at the bottom. I'm gonna use my V-Marver. Um, you guys can see it right at the bottom of the screen there. That's gonna help kind of neck things down and establish the point where I'll take it off of the tube. Uh, basically doing the same function that uh, putting in a jack line up in the hot shop would do. But since I'm using both hands to control this, I don't have the option to use the jacks for this step. So that's where that V-Marver comes in handy. You can see I've condensed things down more. It's even skinnier below the, the pattern area there now. Now I'll put in my jack line. Now normally with the jack line, you would uh, kind of break it off at this point with like the diamond shears, but when you've got a piece on a punty, it generally doesn't work out too well because that'll just kind of pop right off. So I actually blow and pop a hole to remove this. So my hole popped quite a bit lower than I would have liked it to. Um, that's okay though means I've got some more glass to get rid of up top there. Well, now, now it's the top, but basically the bottom of the stopper. So I've got my flame working jacks. I love these things. They're super, super handy. They work the same way the ones do in the hot shop. They're coated with beeswax. I don't have my beeswax back on my bench yet, so they might get to a point where I can't use these, but for now they've got enough beeswax on them. I just got the last of the tile installed on my bench yesterday, so I'm slowly bringing back all the, all the clutter that's needed to have every tool and everything I would need uh, within arm's reach at my station. So I kind of got it flared open now. And now I'm gonna trim away all that excess glass using shears. I've got a pair of Jim Moore uh, cup shears here. They've got a shorter blade. So they're, they have a little more finesse to them and they're good for tighter circles. Just get the glass super hot. Start at your lowest point. Now let's trim a little bit past where you started. Um, there's one spot that's still a little uneven here, so I'm gonna heat it up again and trim that off. As 
so. I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit there. Now we'll start getting my final opening. So you start by paddling. And if your sidewalls are a little uneven, quick spin in your elm arbor helps to kind of even it out. Now we just made that lip nice and perpendicular. Now I'm gonna get it super hot and start flaring it open to match the diameter of the uh, that metal stopper. You can see I open it up quite a bit there. Still not quite where I want it, but it's close. So I'll do a couple more adjustments. It's a little off center. So again, I'm gonna go back to my, my Elm Arbor here. Kind of just gently coaxing it back towards center. Another paddle on the bottom. I'm gonna use one of my graphite reamers just to kind of help get the, uh, the final size in here. And now we try it. See if it, see if it matches up there. That's pretty dang good. I'll do a closer view so you guys can see. Um, I could have gone a little bit, I could go a little further open um, on that stopper to get it to match the diameter a little better, but it's really close. I can hold it there and show you guys. So that's so close that I don't think it's worth messing with. Again, my 80% rule. Um, but if it was not open far enough, I would just heat it up and flare it open some more. Right now I'm just doing a flame polish. Sometimes the surface of the glass can get some flaws in it and getting kind of pushed around. So just giving it a nice polish. One last little paddle. It's really important that the bottom is totally flat, otherwise glue will seep out uh, when you go to put it on the stopper. Do one more check here. Yeah, looks good. So now I'm gonna break it free. I'm gonna use my annealing flame to kind of warm things up a little bit. Just making sure that I don't crack anything when I take it off. I'm gonna use my claw grabbers. Also uh, known as head scratchers. A little tap to break it free. And we'll polish the very tip. And because we've puntied to this tip twice, and we, we blew out the glass and then shrunk it way back down. This glass has been kind of abused quite a bit. And so I've found that you really have to get a super good heat for your final punty polish to make sure there's no imperfections on the tip of the stopper. I mean, that's the spot that everyone sees. So we really wanna make sure that that area is nice and clean. And then just like with the marble, I take out a bunch of my uh, oxygen from the flame to a big bright propane flame and then use that reflection to look at the surface of the glass to check for any imperfections. That's looking really good. Show you guys the pattern here. See that honeycomb. There's the profile of the piece. So yeah, that is how you make a honeycomb bottle stopper. As always, now it goes into the kiln so it can cool slowly. And I always stand them up in there so that they don't, don't roll around and don't uh, end up sitting on the top side where I polished them. If that top spot is where I polished them is too hot, They'll get a little mark sitting in the kiln if that side comes in contact with the kiln. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how I make my honeycomb bottle stoppers. Um, they're, they're kind of a complex piece, um, but uh, the result is totally worth it and it lets me use the stainless steel stoppers, which is awesome. So um, 
Yeah, as far as updates go, uh, we've got a couple of videos coming out this weekend. I think we're doing uh, a rhubarb based demo. That was something that Ryan and Jake did this past uh, fall, I think. Um, really cool sculptural base that we had a commission for. So we're gonna be putting that out, I think, tomorrow. Uh, let's see here, Sunday. Uh, I've got a video about the definition of a punty. Uh, it's a term we use a lot in glass blowing. Um, just connecting up a piece to work on the other end of a piece. Um, so Jake does a cool explanation about that. Uh, and then on Monday, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do my C anemone pendants. Um, that's actually a, another project that came out of my internship uh, on the Puget Sound, which unrelated to the internship, but that's when I kind of discovered this technique. I was uh, working out there, we had a touch tank full of uh, sea life, and I was like, oh, it'd be cool to learn how to make anemones in glass. And uh, I figured out this anemone style technique, and I was like, that's it. So I've done those for about 12, well, almost 12 years now. And uh, yeah, it's a cool, fun process, a really three-dimensional um, look inside of a pendant. So I'll demonstrate that on Monday. And we're still taking, uh, you know, ideas for custom pendants. So keep those coming in. Um, and if it's something we think we can do, uh, we'll be in touch with you and let you know uh, what that's looking like. And maybe we can live stream your, your custom pendant. So um, in the meantime, thanks again, you guys, for all the support. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, make sure you're getting outside time too. It's super important to get outdoors, get some fresh air, um, find the sun when it does come out. Uh, yeah, be safe. Um, thanks to all of you for supporting small businesses and uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.